Hi everybody. Today caregivers are asking why waiting to discuss care for aging parents can cause more problems in the future for family caregivers, especially caregivers who jump in without thinking about what might happen in the future and aging parents who have health problems and they have no idea what is about to happen. Many caregivers that I speak to spiral in these situations where they do their best to advocate for a loved one's wishes with no response from anybody in the family. Or maybe there are some disagreeable family members who you know, might be causing problems, or maybe you're a caregiver and your brother or your sister or somebody else was appointed the power of attorney and you're having to battle this person. If you wait to have conversations about your concerns, the minute that you have them and you don't put anything in writing, it can eventually be too late to solve these situations when they're small. Sometimes you just can't turn back that clock and start over. Conversations that you could have had years ago, six months ago, and could have been documented to make sure that what your parent wanted was on paper and could be executed. Those conversations, didn't happen, nothing was written down, you may be in an impossible care situation that you're trying to manage and your feeling is just so out of control. And it is out of control, I understand. Because I talk to many caregivers and aging parents who are facing these issues and they just don't know what to do. So stay with me while I share two stories that indicate why waiting to discuss care for aging parents can cause a lot of problems in the future for family caregivers that you could avoid if only you have the conversation today before parents have a lot of health problems, before there are a lot of needs, before you're spending more than just a couple hours a week helping your aging parents. So. If this is your first time on my channel, I'm Pamela D. Wilson. I am a caregiving expert, advocate, and speaker with more than 20 years of experience professionally who helps adults and caregivers plan and work through health, financial, legal aspects of caregiving and family relationships. You can learn more about me and my 20 years of professional experience by scrolling below this video into the comments section. You'll find information about me, helpful links to my website, how to schedule a one-on-one -on -one consultation. Please do, very important, like this video, like it right now, follow my channel, press that button, and comment or just say, hey, thanks for the video. One little thank you from you helps other people find these videos and my website and their way to help and support. My website is PamelaDWilson.com. So let's talk about points of no return, caregiving situations that have just gone too far for the care of an aging parent. And these happen because family caregivers, siblings, aging parents do not have serious conversations before situations get worse and more care is needed. Now, why does this happen? Well, it happens because caregivers are trying to manage their own lives, right? You got work and career and family and kids and you're juggling all this stuff. So there's no time to talk to parents. And in many situations, because you're new to this, you have no idea what's about to happen. You have no idea that there is this train coming down the track that is going to have a collision. And sometimes you're just uncomfortable talking about it. I have talked to older adults who say, you know, I'm trying to talk to my kids about this and they don't want to talk to me. My suggestion is ask them, set a meeting, keep asking them until they're willing to have a conversation. Now, part of the problem is, right, you have to know what you're going to talk about. And if you have no experience, where do you find that out? You can schedule a consultation with me and I can take you through it. So because people don't have time, they don't know what they're planning for, either the kids don't want to meet or the parents don't want to meet, there can be not a lot of thought given to the fact that Adult children in the family, you and your siblings, maybe you don't get along either. So there needs to be conversations with siblings about what's going on. 
And if all this has started to get out of control and go too far, maybe there's just a lot of disagreement in your family, a lot of anger and people not getting along and people disagreeing and people that don't want to get together to talk and people saying, I don't want to have anything to do with this, right? So you have all this mess to deal with. Delaying these conversations and not working through these unpleasant situations only make all of this get worse. And who suffers in all of this is the person who needs care. The person who suffers is your aging parent because they are probably sick. Maybe they have Alzheimer's or dementia or other health problems. All they want to do is live a peaceful life. They want to watch Wheel of Fortune and they want to go sit out in their garden. Maybe they want to pet their dog or their cat, right? They don't want to deal with all this mess. They don't have the desire to fix all this, right? So it's up to you, unfortunately, as the caregiver. You accepted the role. You got to solve the problem, whether you want to or not. And regardless of how disagreeable your siblings or other people you are, there's nobody who's going to move this situation forward. If you ignore it or delay it, it's only going to get worse. And families are like, oh, Pamela, this is, we're embarrassed about this. It's bad. And I'm like, it happens in every family, every family. Even my family had some disagreements about what should be done. And we didn't have conversations. And obviously, this was more than 20 years ago. My parents have been gone almost 30 years now. This was before I got into this career and learned what I've learned over the past almost 25 years doing this. So let's look at a couple of scenarios. And each scenario has a couple of options inside. So scenario number one is very common situation. One child, usually the daughter, becomes the caregiver for a parent. None of the siblings offer to help, have conversations. They're just like, Phew, we are so lucky. Our sister is taking care of this. We don't have to deal with mom and dad. Thank God. Well, one of two things is eventually going to happen. And you need to know about this so that you're not shocked. Eventually, your sister is going to get burned out. And she may just quit and disappear after she's asked you guys for help and you've ignored her or you're like, oh, we don't have time. You're doing such a great job. Just keep doing it, right? Well, your sister leaves and you and your siblings are like, well, how could she have left? Why is she angry with us? What's going on? Well, hello, you were in oblivion for all those years thinking that it wasn't a hard job and that it was okay for her to do that. You through your inaction and ignoring the situation, helped create this horrible situation for your parent. And now your sibling, she doesn't want to have anything to do with you or with your parents. So how good is that for anybody? It's not. It could have been avoided if you would have had a conversation a long time ago with your parents and with your siblings and set some boundaries and made a plan and set some parameters. These situations cause a lot of bad feelings in families. They destroy family relationships. Parents can feel abandoned by this caregiver who got burned out, who was calling for help, but nobody was answering the call. Now, scenario number two in this, one of your siblings, sister or brother, they're like, hey, I'll take care of mom and dad, no problem. So they're dealing with their medical and their financial and their legal plans. And eventually, because it's practical, mom or dad names your sibling as their financial power of attorney and the executor of their estate and maybe the trustee of their trust. And because your sibling has agreed to take it all and you guys have opted out, they get the house when mom or dad die. And as this progresses, your parents may need 24-7 care. Your sibling may give up their job and they're moving in and now living with your parents. And so similarly, all of you guys have been hands off. You're like, hey, they're doing a good job. Let's just let it go. Well, all of a sudden, one of you, for some reason, gets concerned. Well, how did all this happen? How did our brother or sister get agent under medical power of attorney? How are they getting mom and dad's house? Well, where have you been? This situation is where it is because you didn't want to be involved. So now you don't just get to show up and complain, right? I mean, you can. You have a right to. But that's kind of water under the bridge at this point after you have been uninvolved for so many years. Your sibling has a lot of leverage. They've got a lot of control because they've been your parents' caregiver. And I hope in this situation, 
your sibling has good intentions and is doing the best for your parent as humanly possible. Because there are situations where sibling does this and their intentions are not good and they're neglecting parents. And then it's very hard for everybody else who hasn't been involved to prove that like, oh my gosh, there's wrongdoing. There's been financial exploitation. My parents are being neglected. You're in an all out battle. So in any of these scenarios, if you're not the caregiver and one of your siblings is involved in care for your parents, at least have a conversation, at least have a backup plan. Look at what this looks like five or 10 years from now when your sibling is exhausted. Get involved, stay involved as much as you possibly can. Don't just disappear and then expect everything to work out because it usually doesn't. Scenario number two involves Aging parents who've always been self-sufficient. They've cared for each other. They haven't wanted to burden you as kids. They didn't want you to be involved. They don't really tell you about what's going on with their health. There haven't been any family discussions about with your siblings. Well, what happens if mom dies before dad? What happens if one of them need care? Are we gonna help or are we not gonna do this? You've not had these conversations. Your parents, on the other hand, haven't talked to you either. It's kind of like, out of sight, out of mind. And let's say that one day you or your siblings visits and you find out your parents have really good friends that are involved in their life and they're taking care of all of their legal matters and maybe they're the executor of their estate and maybe your parents own a couple businesses and they're helping with that too. Well, as a child, you may feel left out or you may feel like, wow, these people are gonna like take over my parents' life and their money and you're concerned. Well, your parents have a right to make their own plans. They don't need to involve you or your siblings. And this may have happened because you never expressed an interest. You never said, hey, mom, dad, we'll help you when you get older. We'd like to be involved. Again, families who don't have these conversations, things don't turn out the way people expect. Then maybe there are the opposite situation, parents who never talked about care with their children and you never talked about care with your parents and all of a sudden they get sick and they expect you to do everything. They're calling saying, hey, I need help, I need money, can I move in with you? And I can't take care of myself anymore. And you and your siblings are like, I don't know who's gonna be the caregiver. Who's gonna to agree to do this? And so in these situations when nobody wants to be the caregiver, Either somebody has to step up or as a sibling unit, you all have to agree to figure out how to plan for Medicaid or how to plan for when your parents run out of money or how to plan to have other people take care of them. Or you just hire somebody to do this for your parents, right? Because you don't wanna be involved. So as you can see, there are so many scenarios, crazy, normal, unexpected that happen that really could be avoided if long before something happens, when people are still healthy, or maybe when they're just starting to need a little bit of help, you have these conversations. And then, especially if you are what I call a solo ager, maybe you're married and your husband or your wife died and you didn't remarry and you maybe you don't even have kids, right? In that case, you need a very detailed and a very practical plan for your care. Who's gonna help you? Who can you name as legal agents? How are you gonna pay for care? And a lot of times we just don't wanna talk about this stuff because it seems so far off. Well, it could only be as far off as like five o'clock today or tomorrow when something happens. And a lot of these discussions are difficult because we don't wanna talk about health problems or being sick or having other people come in and control our life. Because as we age, all of us are likely to have health problems. All of us are likely to have limitations placed on our life because of a health problem or because of something else, right? A home may have to be sold to pay for assisted living for a parent. And maybe a parent can't manage in the home, so the home has to be sold and they have to move anyway. You know, thinking about this whole downsizing thing and then 
How do you have access to medical care? How are you going to get to a doctor appointment? All of these little things become huge, huge things and really considerations that you never thought of, you never planned for. You know, where do you live? Do you live in the city where there's access to medical care? Are you in a suburb where you have to drive in for medical care? Are you in a rural area where there is no medical care? These are things to think about. When you're young and healthy, it doesn't matter, right? You don't need to go see the doctor. Life is good. Well, when you're older, it can be a very different story. I help individuals and families have these discussions and plan for care. There's a link below this video where you can schedule a one-to-one -one consultation with me and learn more about my professional background. Let's be honest, life is challenging. It's busy. There are all these shiny objects out there that we are chasing and we're doing and we want to do all these things. But being proactive throughout your life about health and health care and planning for retirement and aging should not be underestimated. This is the way that you can have a good life and enjoy your retirement, but only if you plan for it. Because one day something crazy could happen and your life is turned upside down. So if you're healthy, pay attention to your health, get your regular checkups, make a plan for your care while you're healthy. If you have aging parents, encourage them Encourage them to have these conversations with you and your siblings and have these within your family. If you are one of multiple siblings, start having discussions about who's going to care for mom and dad and then go and have these discussions with your parents and tell them what's practical and what's not practical. If you're single, you've got to figure out a plan for your own care. The only way around this is to attack it straight on. It's to have those conversations so that you are not responding to crisis and all of these unexpected events that happen when people need care or when you become a caregiver. In the best scenario for all of us, it's to be perfectly healthy until the day we are sick and die. But few people are that lucky. Most people have multiple health conditions that last for years and years and they slow them down. So when these little things happen, don't ignore them. Pay attention to them. Be realistic about your options. Talk about plans to address these issues. What happens if this gets worse? How can I manage it? How can I make it better? What conversations should I be having with myself, my spouse, my children, within my family, maybe with my friends if I'm single? All of these conversations can relieve a lot of stress and worry that happens unnecessarily later in life. I all thank you all so much for being here. I'm Pamela D. Wilson. I'm a caregiving expert, advocate, and speaker with over 20 years of experience. Again, you can go below this video to learn more about me. Please also click, follow my channel, share my videos, make a comment, say thank you. Your participation by even one little thank you helps so many people find their way here to my channel and to my website. I'll see you all again soon in another video.